Welcome back to the channel and in this two-part tutorial series we're going to be making this adorable little bear in Blender and we're going to be doing the texturing in Adobe 3D Substance Painter or Substance Painter 3D whatever they call it now. Um, so you can see here this is what it looks like we're going to try and keep it as simple as possible and for those of you who um, are not aware Adobe is Adobe Substance Painter it's kind of weird calling it Adobe Substance Painter because it didn't used to be owned by Adobe um, is actually something you have to pay for but you can try it out for free there is actually a free trial unfortunately you have to get this whole um, Adobe Substance 3D collection plan unfortunately to get it it's kind of unfortunate that it's gone that way but nevertheless Adobe Substance Painter is a really powerful tool and it's really fun to use and I thought I might just as well cover it a bit because there's not a lot of um, new tutorials being made on Blender and Substance Painter unfortunately so I thought I might just as well start doing it a little bit and see how it goes so as always the um, blend files will be on my Patreon you can check that in the description and if you guys want to check out Skillshare where you can try it out for free for one month as well you can use my link in the description to sign up for that and it's a month of free stuff you can use if you don't want to go on you don't have to and I've got a whole ton of resources and blend files on there as well feel free to check it out but I think I've said enough let's get into this adorable little tutorial and I hope you guys learn something and enjoy I guess I go ahead and open up a new scene in blender and what we're going to do is just delete the camera and the default light just get rid of them and we're just going to use the default cube to get started with today this is one of those rare tutorials where we don't actually do anything nasty to the default cube so we're going to go into our front orthographic view by hitting one on the number pad and by the way, the screencast keys are down here on the bottom left. And with that cube active, you can press tab on your keyboard. We're now going to go into edit mode. And inside of edit mode, make sure everything is active. So press A to select everything. And then you're going to go S, Y, and you're just going to flatten it a little bit on the Y. If you press free on the number pad, you go into your right orthographic view like this. So hitting one on the number pad to go into the front orthographic view. Um, we want to work efficiently here. So let's divide this in half. So we're going to go Control R or Command R and you'll see the yellow line appear if you move over here with the cursor and just left click twice. And that adds in that cut there or that, that edge I should say. And then you're going to press um, Z or another way, instead of pressing Z, you can also just go up here to the um, X-ray. So click on the X-ray toggle and you can just click and drag and just select the left side in the front of the graphic view and press X and delete these verts. Now you have half of your box here. Just go to your modifiers and give that a mirror. And obviously if we were to move this, it'll go apart. So make sure you always enable clipping so that mesh fuses together, which is really good. So now we have that all set up and this is some really basic um, modeling. So let's just select these bottom parts and we're gonna go G and just move them over like this a little bit. And then we're gonna go Control R, add in a loop here, double click. And let's just, Grab these two verts here in a front view, let's move them in. And all we're doing here is creating a very basic shape, as you can see, for our teddy bear head. And let's go to our modifiers, give it a subdivision surface modifier. And now if we tab out into object mode, you can see we have this cool shape here. Um, so just heading back into edit mode, let's just in the viewport level over here in the subdiv, let's just bump that up to two. And that's all we have to do for now. So you can see here, this is the basic shape of the head. Well, let's just add in one more loop. So we're going to go Control R, add in the edge here, just to create a little bit more of a shape towards the bottom. So just a little bit more definition, just tightening it up just a little bit and moving it out like that. So you can see what that shape looks like now. You may want to go into the right view if you want. You can go Control R and just add in one cut like this. And then in your right orthographic view, you can also just select these faces here and go S to scale them a bit. And these ones here um, that's optional but that will help things look a little bit better as well and uh now that we have that done let's go to our edge select option here click on that and we're gonna go shift alt click on this edge here to loop select this edge and let's just also go toggle off our x-ray for now and with that done we're gonna go Control b or command b to create a bevel so we're gonna create a bevel like this and then roll your middle mouse button up once just to add in a bevel segment in the middle Let's just bring that in like that. That looks really cool. And with that all active, you're going to go Control minus or Command minus. And now you can see it shrinks that. So we only have the inner edge selected. We're going to go Alt S and we're going to just scale it in along the normals like that. And that's going to create the illusion of a seam there like that, which is pretty cool. So now back into object mode, we're going to right click and go Shade Smooth like so. Let's make a few more body parts. We're going to go Shift A, add in another cube or 
Even better, let's just select our head here and go Shift D and then Z, bring it down to about here, then tab into edit mode. And then press A to select everything and go G, X, and bring it in on the X like that. And then go to your vertex select option, select these verts, rotate them like so, bring them up into there. And uh, then go to your right orthographic view by hitting free on your number pad. And then here, you can also just select the verts and scale them. Now this is personal preference. How much you wanna um, mess around with this is completely up to you. Um, but I like a thickness like this. I don't want the body to be too much thicker than the head. And I think of the head here as well in the right orthographic view. I might actually just select these bottom verts, enable proportional editing, then go S, Y and just scale in the Y while I roll that proportional fall off. And I think I'm gonna do the exact same thing here at the top as well. Um, but yeah, go ahead, spend as much time as you want refining the, the shapes of your design. Um, obviously here at the top, it's looking a bit funky. So I'm just gonna fix that up real quick. So scaling it on down on the Y and scaling this out a little bit. Control R might add in one more loop here, S, Y and scale it a bit on the Y. So mess around with that shape as much as you want, but getting back to the body, we're gonna tab into edit mode again. And we're also just gonna flatten this bottom out a little bit. So just scaling that down on the Z like so. So so far, our um, body and our head are taking shape here. Um, let's make the little arms for this guy. So we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna add in a cube. S to scale that cube down and then G and we're bringing it up here into the corner of the head and body. And let's give that a mirror. Give it a little eyedropper here and just click on the body as a reference. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode and turn off proportional editing. At this point, we're just gonna select that face there. We're gonna go G and just move it out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Control R and we're gonna roll in a few loops like this. Double click. And then we're gonna go and select this face here. Enable proportional editing again. And this time you're gonna go S, Z and flatten it on Z a little bit. Then go to your top of graphic view. And then you're gonna select these edges here and then you go S, Y and just scale it out in the Y just a bit. And at this point you can shape the arm however you want. So I think that looks kind of cute. Then select this face here in the inside, S and just scale that down a bit. And then while you have that face active, go X and just delete that face. Let's give that a subdivision surface modifier. And um, at this point, you can shape this however you want. So you can actually select all of the mesh, kind of just rotate it. And this is completely up to you, okay? So you guys can um, style this however you want. But all I'm doing here is just selecting the different parts of the arm and just bringing them down a little bit. But just try and keep that topology nice and steady, nice and neat. So, okay. That is looking pretty cute, like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to object mode, click on that, right click, and then go shade smooth. So now that has smooth shading on it. And we're making excellent progress at the moment, but let's just quickly select this body. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit. Control R just to add in a loop here. And the reason I'm doing that is I just wanna make a little bit of an inset here, almost like that. That's where the leg is gonna be in there, okay? So this is something you can look at some references of teddy bears. This is more or less how it would kind of come together here at the bottom like that. Okay, so now that we have that kind of triangular shape there, we can select the arm actually, Shift D to duplicate it, and simply reuse to save a bit of time. So we're just rotating it roughly about there, tab into edit mode, and then the exact same thing. You can grab faces and edges, and you can style your design. Um, one thing that I have noticed in looking at references that leg kind of slants a little bit like that is the fabric is sewn to the bottom and they kind of go out a little bit. But there's a lot of different designs out there. So there's no one thing I could say, well, this is exactly how it should be um, because there's a lot of different ways that this is done. But um, stylize it however you want. And, you know, experimentation is oftentimes a really fun thing as well. Try some different designs. You don't have to just stick with one style and then just find something that you like. So that is looking pretty cute for now. I think maybe those legs are just too tall. So I'm gonna bring them up like that. 
no worry if they're not touching the floor all we have to do in a little bit when we're happy with this is just select everything in object mode and then go G D, and just move it till it's roughly sitting on that floor okay so now we have a very rough idea of our character so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a little bit of tweaking in time lapse but we already have the overall design in place and then I'll get into the rest of it where I'm going to show you how we can um, apply some of the modifiers do some UV unwrapping and then we can get into the um, realistic texturing part of this as well I've gone ahead and refined the overall shape. Uh, I forgot to actually mention, we still have to obviously make the eyes and a few features like the ears and the snout. So um, that's not that hard. So let's just quickly get that done. So let's start with the ears. Um, Shift A, let's just add in a cube. I think that's gonna be the easiest way. We're gonna go G and just move it to the top and then S to scale that cube down. Now let's give that a mirror modifier and select the head as a reference. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab into edit mode real quick. And let's just rotate that cube, turn off proportional editing and um, scale it up. Just get a size that kind of looks right to you. I think a little bit bigger is cute, but not too big. And we're going to go S, Y, and just flatten the whole thing on the Y like that. And uh, we're just going to do the box modeling technique. So we're just going to add some basic topology and then rely on the subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. So control R, let's roll in about two loops here and move them out and then control r roll in about three loops over here bring that out and you can see here we're keeping things very simple and just get rid of any unnecessary topology so just selecting these faces at the bottom x and then delete those faces and because we're dealing with felt here we probably want to come to the middle here control r add in an edge and this is kind of going to be where the seams come together it's two kind of patches so we're going to enable proportional editing again we're going to go s y and we're just going to flatten that under y make sure to roll the proportional editing down that only influences the edges not the rest of it too much so just something like that you can turn off proportional editing and let's just go to our face select and i think this is going to be an important detail but we're going to go um, c so just press c and then just select these faces at the front here but not the ones at the back and just go i and i will inset it so we're just insetting it a little bit and then just um, e to extrude and then s to scale it just a little bit like that and that kind of just gives us an area where we're going to lay our seam with the texturing and then just quickly do the exact same thing at the back here so because i've just done that at the front i'm going to time lapse just this bit of me doing it at the back Okay, and that was it. In fact, um, I hardly had to time lapse that. That was pretty quick. So now you can see how that looks like. Pretty cute. So tab back into object mode, right click, and then go shade smooth. Now, shift A, just add in a UV sphere, and it's simply just a little ball, and that's the eye. So we're just gonna bring it here. And the same thing, subdivision surface modifier, and also a mirror modifier. And you can select the head as a reference right click and then shade smooth and um, this is up to you like i know i say that a lot but um, the whole placement of details is really a personal preference what looks cute to you might be a little bit different to what looks cute to me but i think overall these these cute little beady eyes that are not too big work really well so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to make a little snout here in the middle i'm going to add in a cube bring it over here now because this is going to be very similar to how we've made a lot of the other parts with the box modeling technique I'm just going to put this into time lapse because it'll be unnecessary to go for each little detail and it'll save us a bit of time so I'm just going to speed that up
Okay, so that was just a really simple design with that, doing some basic box modeling. Um, maybe I'll refine it a little bit later on off of camera, but generally you get the idea here. It's just kind of like a patch that's sewn on here, but at the moment it kind of looks like a pig because this looks like a nose, which is not, kind of more like a patch. But to make a nose, um, same deal, just add in a cube, give it a subdivision surface modifier, scale that one down, move it forward, and they pretty much just have a little buttony nose. Now, how you wanna go about modeling that and giving it some detail is uh, completely up to you. Um, it's simply just something that you can extrude and do some really basic box modeling with. And essentially it just needs to be something that goes down like that and just implies that there is a little nose there. So um, nothing too extraordinary. In fact, I'll just add a few more little details here and I'll also just put that into time-lapse. And there we have it. So there is the little snout part. This is probably gonna be a plastic material um, because of what it is. So you could make it fabric as well. Um, but for me, I prefer to go with this sort of look. And um, yeah, that is as easy as it gets pretty much. So I'm gonna leave that at that for now. And I will see you guys in the next part, which is gonna be part two, where we're gonna apply some of these modifiers. We're gonna UV unwrap it. And then I'm gonna show you how to take this into Adobe 3D Painter, Substance 3D Painter actually. And um, then we're gonna, you know, I'll show you some very basic techniques. We're not gonna get too complicated with all of that. Um, but we're gonna give it a realistic fabric um, texture and um, do some little seams or some little sewing seams and a few little details. It's just really gonna make it look cool. And uh, we'll probably bring it back into Blender as well, maybe in part two, but most likely in a part three where we'll just set it all up in Blender and do a really nice uh, render of our teddy bear character here. Thank you for watching.